Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel again. We got better lighting in the garage finally, so I've just ran some extension cords around everywhere. But today we're going to be finishing up that oil pressure gauge that I so miserably failed to install last week. We have our oil pressure relocation kit, or I guess it's an oil pressure line that we're gonna be moving. So this is a Pro Sport uh, two foot stainless steel, so it's gonna bend around and get all bendy and whatnot. We're gonna end up hooking this up to the firewall with our oil pressure sender that I got right in front of me here. So with that, I wanna get this thing working. We got the Subaru behind me ready to go. And I can't wait to get that beautiful, beautiful gauge reading. I also have light here now. Look at this softbox. I'm just being weird. Apologies. So, let's jump into this. Um, I need to take out the intercooler piping up in the front of the car, and then I need to move some hoses around. I didn't really show you guys that well the uh, the last time around when I did this, since Matt was here and we were trying to figure everything out. We ran into that issue. But uh, I'm gonna record the, kind of what you need to get out of the way. If you have a front mount intercooler, you're just gonna have to take out the piping. If you have a top mount intercooler, you're gonna have to take that top mount completely off the car to be able to get to this oil galley. We are tapping into the rear oil galley uh, right near the turbo for this oil pressure gauge. I don't wanna take my alternator off. I'll probably take it off in the future, but not, not today. Not today. So, let's start taking it apart. I don't know why I do this every time, but let's cover the kind of the stuff that comes with this because you need some special things. You need some special stuff to be able to do this. So this um, fitting, I guess you could call it, bolt, nut, nut, whatever you want to call it, is the, uh, a special nut that goes in the oil galley. So this side is a BPST, which is like British Standard Plug Thread or something like that. And then this side is NPT, so that way we can put our fitting, or in our case, our extension coming through that. So it's kind of going to go in like that. So the the actual extension wire cable guy is gonna go into it like this, and then it's gonna screw on, it'll go in the oil galley, and then we'll be able to monitor oil pressure. Nifty. Uh, if you buy the Pro Sport one, you will get a brand new one. Boom, this one right here. That one, I don't remember what brand it is, but I bought one just because I didn't have one at the time. Uh, we have our sensor, a couple zip ties, a nice little clamp for the sensor that I don't know if I'm going to use quite yet, but if we do, we will. A little 90 degree elbow, uh, I'm going to need that to connect these guys together. And then uh, just some random tools, you need a torque wrench, torque everything back down once we get that bolt in there. Uh, you need a special T7 bit to be able to get the factory fitting out, it's just a cap. Uh, but you need a, at least a T7 bit to be able to get that out. Some PTFE tape to be able to seal everything up so we don't got any leaks. And then a random assortment of tools. I'm using a 17 millimeter for the bung, 13 millimeter for intercooler piping, 11 for intercooler piping, 14 for the fittings, and then some miscellaneous other tools. So now that we've kind of covered everything here, I'm go start tearing the car apart. So I want to show you guys where this plug is because I had the damnedest time finding it on my own. If you look at the turbo right there, the inlet of it, if you look just south of that, right down there, that's where your oil galley is going to be. So it's right next to the PVC, or the, what is that, what is that, PCV system plug. So that's the T7. I'm going to go ahead and get that pulled out and get that new fitting pulled in and then we will uh, we'll find a way to route this route this wire because I'm not sure where we're gonna put it quite yet um, I'm thinking somewhere along that back firewall but we'll, we'll figure it out I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that guy out and we'll keep going so this oil galley plug is torqued down to uh, about 28 foot pounds so just grab a brake bar and break it free it's really not that difficult once you get this guy on there freedom look at that that's the galley plug that's inside of it it's literally just a plug so now that we've got the plug out, I'm gonna throw some PTFE tape on the uh, new bung. It's a 17 millimeter, we're gonna get that bung installed and then uh, start running our line. Just like I said before, we've got our new bung plug here with the uh, BPST threads on one side, NPT holes on the other side, and then we've got some uh, PTFE tape put on there. So I'm gonna get this guy threaded into that uh, that hole and we'll, uh, we'll keep going on getting that, that uh, adapter piece put on there and run our sensor. So 
So I've got this guy started. We need to torque it down now to, I'm gonna do 24 foot pounds. Your torque spec's gonna be between 20 and 28. So I'm gonna go right in the middle, 24. And we'll, uh, we'll get it done, done and down. So now that we've got the, the new fitting in where the bung goes, I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna show you the issue that we ran into last time. And then I'm gonna show you how to, how to solve that. So right there is our fitting, that brass piece. And then right to the left of that, there's that coolant nipple right there. So once we put the sensor in, we weren't able to get the hose for that nipple back on right there. So with that steel braided line, we're able to reroute it away from that nipple so we can still get the coolant line on. That coolant line is the crossover tube that goes, oh my goodness, the light. So that coolant line is the crossover tube that goes up to the throttle body to heat the throttle body. Now with that steel braided line, we can go ahead and reroute that and get that plugged back in. So I'm gonna get that line. I'm gonna get some PTFE tape thrown on the steel braided line here. And then we will get the sensor, the elbow, and the line plugged into the car. So I'm gonna get some tape thrown on this. I'm gonna get this screwed into the car. Use a 14 millimeter on this side, so I'm gonna get it tightened down. And we're gonna keep going on this. All right, so I showed you guys where the bung was. I got some PTFE tape thrown onto the end of this fitting. I'm gonna get this screwed in, tightened down, and then we're gonna start running this line in the car. All right, so off camera, I just got the coolant line put back in. So you can see the issue that I was having before, that coolant line right there coming out of the crossover tube near the turbo. There was no way, no way in hell that was fitting with the sensor in there. So it was still a pain in the ass to get it on there and I couldn't get it on there 100%, it's like 95%, but it'll still, it'll be fine. It's not a high pressure line. So now with that guy on there, I'm gonna reassemble the hoses down here um, and then we'll start running the, uh, the sensor for that line. It's coming along slowly. I mean, it sucked. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. That part really sucked. That took me like 20 minutes to get that hose on. Uh, might have been my my inability to work a pair of needle nose pliers rather well, but we got it. So I'm gonna get those hoses reassembled down there, and then we'll uh, we'll keep going on getting the sensor put in. Uh, so we've begun routing that steel braided line as you can see right there so as you can see it, it follows it up to the firewall right there and i just have it zip tied to some other lines just so it doesn't just so it doesn't touch anything hot i'm gonna get the uh the turbo coupler thrown back on same with the throttle body coupler uh just to make sure that we still have clearance down there we clear and if we do we're gonna go ahead and keep going on this uh i'm actually gonna reinstall the intercooler piping on the passenger side and then we'll go on uh and keep installing this guy this guy can't wait G Willikers, this is such a knee slapper. Such a knee slapper. Hey, shameless plug, it's uh, 5.30 on Thursday. Go watch the, uh, the fail, the part one of this video. Go check it out, you'll like it. Figuring out this issue, shameless plug. Go check it out, God, that's oh, yeah. weird. It's like Inception. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. All right. Back to our scheduled programming. All right guys, so I just got the intercooler piping thrown back on. And uh, I have our wire right here, a lead that we're gonna end up connecting everything to. So I need to get some PTFE tape thrown on that guy right there, which I've got up just hanging out right here. And then uh, get this small 90 degree elbow connected and that sensor. So I'm gonna run through, I'm gonna get those connected and then we'll figure out a mounting spot for that. Uh, it doesn't look like we have much room, so I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere down there. You wanna make sure that these fittings are extremely tight. You're gonna have high oil pressure going through these. And if it's not tight, you're gonna have a line explode. And if a line explodes, you're gonna lose oil pressure. Sire, shy surprise. And if you lose oil pressure, you'll blow up your Subaru. We don't want that. We don't want that at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy unmasked here. And there's our electrical connector for this. There's not a lot of places to put this oil pressure line. I can tell you that right now. I'm gonna find a spot to put this line. After I find out uh, where I'm gonna mount this, I'll come back and I'll show you guys where I decided to mount it and uh, we'll make sure it works. This is kind of my, this is temporary routing for right now. But the oil pressure line comes up along my AOS line and I'm just gonna mount the sensor here. Um, once I take, next time I take the air oil separator off, I'm gonna mount that sensor behind the air oil separator and then I'm gonna end up pulling all the slack wire through. But we do have it hooked up. Uh, I did a tool check going around the car. There's no tools left anywhere, so let's hop in the car. And let's see if it's gonna work. 
Uh, so now that the car is warmed up a little bit, you can see oil pressure is dropping. That's normal. Um, warm oil pressure should be around 30 PSI. I still have to uh, warm up a little bit more, but it'll drop down there. And then, as you see, when I rev it, oil pressure matches. So everything looks good on this. Um, I love it. I like the little spot for it down here also. Uh, it fits nicely with the airlift gauge and the STI logo down here. It also goes fantastic with the air fuel ratio and boost gauge. So they all function together, which is nice. I don't think I need any more gauges. I was debating water temp, but eh, don't think I need it. So with this, let's go get this wrapped up. There you have it, guys. Oil pressure gauge, it works. It only took two videos to make it work because my dumbass forgot to order one of the parts. Happens, learn from my mistakes, don't make the same ones. Anyways, as always, you can pick up these parts from Brian at the, oh my God, look at that spider. Oh my God, he's alive. Yo! God, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't do those spiders. Anyways, you can pick these parts up at the Mod Garage from Brian, as always, he's a great dude. And I appreciate the time everyone spends here. If this content helped you out, go ahead, like the video. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Bam, right up there, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies, woo!